The elbow thing doesn't really work when you're, like, next to each other, though. Like, you want to... <laughs> That's how you smash your elbow against someone else's elbow. Yeah. Spoilers, it is not particularly humorous. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. I'm Kaylee. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. We have a special guest, and for those of you watching on YouTube, which I highly recommend, we have a lot of special accoutrements today. Ryan, could you introduce your accoutrement? I have a bass guitar. It is a lovely bass guitar. <laughs> for those of you who are listening, could you, could you, for our, our listening viewers, could you maybe not just describe it? Okay. Uh, well, it is a standard white makes bass some sound. guitar makes some sound. that makes ah, bass noises. There we go. And Kaylee, you are seated on a cajon. A cajon, aka a box drum. Normally, it sounds obnoxious and loud. But I'm playing it with brushes so that it is less obnoxious and loud. And now I, of course, have my trusty acoustic guitar, which has been seen in many videos and really needs to have its string change, strings changed, as I have been told, at least twice today. They are gross. Oh, man. And we're also carefully watching the audio levels so we don't ruin you. Just uh-huh. think of how much more... Uh bright and chipper your songs will be when you don't have warrants. The new strings. strings are literally on my desk, man. <laughs> but no, today we wanted to talk about songwriting and the process of writing a song. And we are going to, um, throughout the course of this podcast, write and work on a song, um, which will become a future Music Friday. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah, snap which I just promised them into. Yeah, thanks for that. But Ryan is a an excellent bass player, and Kaylee's new brushes are quite powerful. They are brushes, all right. <laughs> so, Icebreaker. Yeah, that's a thing. That is a thing. Who is your favorite songwriter? <laughs> Definitely, 100%, you already know the answer, it is Carsey Blanton. <laughs> Carsey Blanton, yes. Why? Uh, because she is a adorable B sing songs that I love and says a lot of excellent has a lot of excellent messaging throughout her songs and also throughout her writing. I used to say that I have a big musician crush on her, but I'm pretty sure I just have like a regular person crush on her. <laughs> right? Do you have two answers to this? I assume you have two answers to this. Um I guess it depends. Um It always does. It always does. <laughs> uh for for example, um, lyrically, I enjoy um, Jesse Leach from Kill Switch Engage. Cool. Um, but I mean, like, for guitar riffs, you know, I enjoy various different bands for different songs. Uh, the most impressive one that I saw song wise was John, um, John Butler of the John Butler Trio. He has a song called Ocean. I've heard a couple different versions of it, but it was a song that he played when he was busking, and he plays it on a 12 string. Um, and he's, he's got the acrylic nails to help him finger pick it all. Okay. And it is, we can put uh, a link to one of the versions of it in the show notes. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's just an uh, acoustic instrumental and it is, it was pretty powerful. I was very impressed when I heard it the first time. Nice. Um, yeah, I stumped myself on my own question, my own question here. Uh, I like a lot of lyricists, but I think my favorite songwriter is probably Nice Peter, <laughs> who, as these two are aware, I won't shut up about. I mean, like, it's weird because he's not like a like a like what you would think of as a mainstream musician. Um, I guess neither is Cartsy Blanton, but like he doesn't really have albums or anything like that. He mm-hmm. just sort of has a YouTube channel. He also runs the epic rap battles of history, mm-hmm. but like all of his sort of songs are sort of happy and and funny and and like he's a musical comedian. Mm-hmm. And I really love the way he puts stuff together, and I love his philosophy of songwriting, which is just write songs about anything. And some of them will be great, and some of them will be good, and some of them will be bad. And the bad ones you turn into good ones, and the good ones you turn into great ones. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And I like that he has a lot of fun at it. I also wish to have a lot of fun at it instead of staring blankly at walls going, Oh, I have an idea. <laughs> Eventually, if you stare at a wall long enough, ideas will just start to, like, fall out of your brain. That was how I learned not to be bored. Future vlog, how I learned not to be bored. I've heard this. 
a good set of sentences. But uh, the way Kaylee and I usually write songs is uh, we will have a line or an idea. We will argue about it for many, many, many hours late into the night. Often. Um, we will put it in a Google Doc. We will forget about it for two weeks, three weeks. A year. A year? I don't think that's ever happened, but a long time. A long time. Has and then and then we will come back to it and we'll be like, oh, we were going to, yeah. And then we, I will remember the chords to it. I feel like the Doctor Who song is set around for like... No. Before Christmas. Six months, definitely. Six months. That's not too bad. It's a hard song. We're going to finish it, though. It'll Ooh. work. It'll be a thing. Next year's Christmas video. Maybe. <laughs> Don't make promises like that. <laughs> this is the podcast where we make internet promises to our audience. That we're going to totally not... That, no, we have, we have kept we every not, single one so far. We did not promise that Doctor Who song next Christmas. I would just like to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> not a promise. But, I uh, know there's always a sort of a, a process. And we have introduced Huck to this, which a, a, a lot of it involves eating pizza and... Um, talking about stuff and getting caught up in digressions, which is very, basically the same production process as the podcast. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't imagine it was a big stretch for you. Only you with know? more humming. Yes, more humming and more instruments. Yeah. I mean, and I'm already used to this bass because, I mean, you know, I was there for the Christmas special, you know, broken ankle notwithstanding. <laughs> I was there to, to help play the bass part on video. <laughs> of which my... Uh, my stepmom definitely was like, yeah, you weren't playing what was going on in there. You were moving your hands around too much. I'm like, thanks. Yeah, if you go and check out our Christmas video where we covered Tim Minchin's White Wine in the Sun, you will see Ryan playing the bass. Uh, I played that bass part. Uh, I don't know what <laughs> Like was... days before that for the recording. I don't know what was more painful, watching me fumble around pretending to play bass or me trying to hit my spots or hit my, my, uh, my notes. In when I was helping to sing, uh, <laughs> it was all right. You did. Yeah, you're all right. You're I, all right. I, it definitely took me proportionally longer to get mine down before <laughs> compared to everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you, you you would not want to see the amount of garbage we have thrown out. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, that's part of songwriting, though. Is is you throw out your garbage, you work you work with what you've got, and you sort of add to it incrementally. Uh, usually, the first question that we ask sort of loudly is what is this song about we ask that loudly and often over and over and over again it is, and I, then we get distracted in between askings yeah but i think it's the most important thing yes i agree for sure because i mean what it's about needs to as much as i like being the guy who's like i can just write songs about ice cream just be like I like ice cream and I like cold. I like ice cream and more at my home. I don't know. I'm just making up words at this point. What what just happened with Jim and me is like the b beginning of probably 50% of our songs. At is least. Is Jim will just sit down, make some sounds, and say some words, and I'll just kind of jam along, and then something actually Kaylee is the, me it. the melody and musical genius department. He keeps telling people that. <laughs> because it's true. Mm -hmm. Um, I can operate a guitar and make up words. Um, what Kaylee does is turn those words into music and add instruments until they sound great. Hmm. I mean, that's what, with the, uh, White Wine and the Sun, you <laughs> sing all those parts in the background to end it off. Yeah. yeah also the, the killer entire, literally entire harmony section. Hmm. Whatever. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good oh, thing. I'm going to fall. Okay. It's good. Also it's the modesty portion. And the balancing portion. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I mean, every every line in the song sort of needs to address what the song is about in some way. I think. I mean, if the song is about how I like ice cream, then the song needs to. I mean, I can't have a line in there about trucks unless it relates back to ice, ice cream, cream trucks. Somehow. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, I mean, you pull it back in. If I want to talk about how I like clowns, I know I'm the only person in the world who likes clowns. I think that may be true. Ever since It came out, everybody pretty much hates clowns. I think people have hated clowns for a long time. I think that, that it John increased Wayne the number Gacy. of people. Yeah, there was that whole you know John Wayne Gacy thing where he dressed up like a clown and killed a lot of people. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. But I believe you. Um, it's a thing. We'll uh, tell Kaylee about John Wayne Gacy later. <laughs>
But uh, no, I, I really it need it, it can't you can't have a, a line about clowns unless the clowns are handing out ice cream or having something to do with ice cream. Um, it needs to contribute to the the song as a whole. Um, and if the song is about ice cream, I want to say it's easy, but it's not because mm. there's only so many times you can sing the words "I like ice cream." At least if you're me. I mean, there's always. What's that song? That suit song that is literally just the same line over and over and over again. That's um, the whole song. You're so cute. I want to wear you like a suit. I think you'd look really good on me. That's the whole song. Look it yeah. up. It's a great song, actually. We're going to do it links in the show notes. That's how we do it here. Magic. And then those links will appear in the show notes. <clears throat> Seems legit. But yeah, or Daft Punk with Around the World. Yeah. Daft Punk with anything, really. Well, no. I mean, we <laughs> Lucky had a lot of lyrics. We had like four lines. <laughs> there were verses. Were there? Yes. Okay. Links to Daft Punk for Kaylee, who doesn't believe me. <laughs> Whatever, man. But, no, I mean, there's that question of uh, what is it about? What are we even doing here? Why are people listening to it? Who is it directed at? And who is speaking? Yep. Also. I mean, it could just be like a song about Jim's personal literal love for ice cream or it could be some person singing about how they i don't know some it could be a, a made-up person singing about their love of ice cream and how it reminds them of i don't know some made-up event it doesn't necessarily have to be <laughs> literal for likes ice cream for likes kittens. but are you thor or are you singing about thor thor usually talks about their person that makes it even more complicated to answer Thor that question. Thor likes hammers and strings on his mittens. No? I don't think, I don't I don't think like Thor has mitten strings. Thor totally has mitten strings. If there's anything we've learned about Thor through like 50 years of comics and, you know, four feature length movies now, it is that Thor is an idiot. <laughs> sure. Thor's like, Thor, Thor's most important object is his hammer. And he keeps losing it. <laughs> How do you think Thor's least important objects, his mittens, get treated? Sure. Thor has strings on his mittens. Well, I wonder saying. who's got a worse track record for holding on to the weapon. Thor or the Jedi? That seems to be a perennial problem in the movies of them constantly losing their lightsabers. Well, I mean, if you have a thing that makes you all powerful, you then need to lose that thing. Yeah. Mm. Well, and that's to to roll that back into songwriting, uh, rather than a complete digression about Thor. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, and th that's part of it. Is, is does a song tell a narrative? Is it declarative? Does it say I like this? I like this. So I mean, um, or does it ask questions? The these are a few of my favorite things. Is a song about a list. It is a li it is a it is a song. It is a list of things. Are it is highly declarative. The list of things genre is uh, Jim and my favorite genre, I would argue. I would say a significant percentage of our songs are the list of things variety. I think a significant percentage of, of modern songs are of the list of things varieties because lists of things are easy to write. And then I think I, I would actually, um, I would I would go back and say that list of things songs have always been around. I mean, I mean whether the lullabies, uh, like Hush Little Baby... Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird if that mockingbird don't sing, etc. Like, like yeah, it's still there's rhymes works. in there, but it's it's it, the, the core of it is a list of things. Um, Christmas but, carols with Santa baby. That's yeah, that's true. I was thinking more, just the one thing, another thing, another thing, another thing, instead of something like Hush Little Baby, which yeah. is here is a thing, and here is I'm going to explain it. Yeah. Um, you know, Brian uh, pop back at one. Yeah. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies, If I Had a Million Dollars. Yeah, that's definitely a list of things song. <laughs> Lots of people have lists of things songs. Rhett and Link have a whole bunch of them. They're super rap. But it is sort of a... a it, it is. I think, I think it's because it's a song that's easy to listen to. Mm. Like, as much as I, I like writing sort of heavily metaphorical intertextual stuff. Because I'm a dork. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it, it's harder for people to get at the meaning. And that is a thing that I worry about is like, I can, I can 
um, Bad Day, which is not on the channel yet, and I don't know if it ever will be. It's kind of depressing. It is super depressing. It is a song I wrote when I was in a really, really bad mood. Um, and it talks about Elder Gods as, a, as some sort of metaphor that's so, like, apparent, but not to me at the time, because I didn't even realize it, but it is a metaphor for suicide. Mm-hmm. And... And that's why it might never be on the channel. We'll yeah. See. I mean, you know, we talked about it a bit on the channel before, so I'm not super worried about that. But it is certainly not there now. And, like, it is easy to read it as a song about, you know, elder gods or destroying the world. If I throw, if I throw some distortion into it, I mean, it makes a pretty good rock song. But... I mean, there, there, there's that point where you want people to read deeper. And think about it. But I think that getting, asking people to read deeper is often an unreasonable expectation. Most people won't, certainly. That's true. Yeah, like if, if you are a Bob Dylan um, and you are a brilliant songwriter... Yeah, if you have thousands or millions of listeners, somebody is going to be paying that much attention to it. Yeah. But, but to ask, like, our 20 friends and my mom to... <laughs> who to were at our last show. Who were at our last show to really read into the stuff that we're saying is yeah. maybe a little a little high on the expectation front. Well, I mean, from me, as a, when I listen to music, usually the lyrics are the third, fourth, fifth thing that I pick out. Mm -hmm. um, usually I listen to it for uh, uh, from a guitar perspective and sonically like how does the song sound how does the, the how does it make me feel what are the riffs how cool are they and then usually but that's also in virtue of the music I listen to where yeah so you hear a lot of metal music yeah hearing the, the lyrics sometimes is not not something that comes out of the forefront it's just another instrument in the overall song yeah I don't know if you've noticed I don't I don't really have a metal voice yeah. Um, well, I don't know. You could do like the the uh, Iron Maiden thing. I feel like you could own Iron Maiden. <laughs> can I can occasionally own an Iron Maiden song? That's true. But I don't really have like a like a drowning pool style metal voice. Gotta get the just do the like Batman thing only louder. That that's really hard. <laughs> I mean, you want a good Batman impression? I'm your I'm your guy, but. Louder, it's just like, like I don't sound like Batman. I sound like a Tasmanian devil. But it is one of the—I don't know—it's one of those things that we always, we always sort of wind up tossing back and forth: is who's going to sing it, and why, and what does it need to sound like? I think you're right, Ryan. That there's that that mode is, is lyrics always come first for me because I can't decide how a thing sounds until I know what it says. I for the in, in my personal like internal songwriting process lyrics just never come unless i hammer at them so it's always sound and melody and chord structure first and then if i ever figure out what i want it to say i will eventually cobble words together so sound like the overarching sound is always the beginner for me but i think that's probably why you and i have come together so effectively is that we just sort of jam those two things together and it I can, sort of works i can out. invent I can invent lots of different words that are just basically bullshit. <laughs> I rapped for half an hour once about uh, playing games on the easiest difficulty. Scrub out. No, no, that no. scrub out was my, my, my rap about sucking at magic and other and other games. Right. Um, no, that was that was easy mode where I was like, oh, some people yeah. call me casual, but I'm not bashful, I'm actual. I played it all from Mass Effect to Castleville and Jim really, really has a lot of rap in his heart that I just needs to be let out. That's a rap problem. He does have a rap problem. I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a gift. David, what's his name? It's it, David Hewlett. David Hewlett, you are not alone. <laughs> that is going to be the title of my first rap song ever. David Hewlett, you are not alone. Yes. <laughs> it will be adorable. I mean, you know, he, he understands what it's like to be me. I mean, he's not Canadian, but he played one on TV. He... Is he not Canadian? No, David Hewlett's British. Oh, fascinating. That was the whole irony of Stargate Atlantis, is they had a British guy playing a Canadian guy, and they had a Canadian guy playing a, playing a Scottish guy. Hmm. All right. Because the actor who played the Doctor, um, Carson, 
uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, was Canadian. Huh. Cool. So songwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Jim has a rap problem. I try to keep it contained as much as possible. No, I can't contain this. <laughs> it knows no bounds. Um, no, but that, I think I think this is the essential bit of, of of songwriting bullshit. Is is just like there's a lot of random stuff, and the goal is to refine the stuff that you can use and filter out the crap and filter out the crap and like, like and, and and refine it into something that has a sort of laser like focus. Laser-like. Yeah. Well, I mean, how often do we sit there playing with one line? Yeah. You know, every every line has to sort of carry meaning. It has to be yeah. useful. And every I, every word has to have a reason for being there. Yes. At the same time, I feel like that's a that that's also a huge drawback. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you if you look at artists like uh, Nicki Minaj, or don't do that. We had a really great. Uh, conversation with Ay on the when she was on the podcast about Nicki Minaj. I, I the the thing I am blinking blankly at you about is that I don't know to what you were referring. Oh, um, <laughs> Nicki, Nicki Minaj's songs have a had, they often have a lot of repetition, mm. um, you know, or Beyonce. I mean, Beyonce's ever famous classic single ladies. <laughs> yes, uh, has a whole bunch of lines that repeat continuously, and pop music. But, the, the second, but the second time a line in, in, in there, I mean, this is sort of what makes us folk writers, as much as I want to write rock and roll, is it's hard to justify a repetition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like that's a failing. Mm. But Depends. I can't just sit there and be like, I like ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Ice cream, 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 I don't know what fermata is. It's it's when you hold a note or a rest appropriately in music. Okay, because like I thought it was like a, some kind of Italian ice cream. That's gelato. Ah! <laughs> so close! Gelato doesn't fit in the song as well. No, probably not. So we were going to write a song. We are going to write a song. Um, we taught Ryan some notes on the bass. Well, I mean, he already knew them, but we decided on them. I have been pondering the chords the whole time. One of the other cool things about, like, sort of just playing music is no matter what you say, while you're playing guitar, everything just sounds super cool. Yeah, I could be talking about how much I like ice cream or stories about the ice cream truck that didn't exist in my childhood middle-of-nowhere town and all the nostalgia about middle-of-nowhere town, lack of ice cream trucks, and even just ranting about ice cream stuff that I could talk about still sounds way cooler with backing music, right? I wish I could do this at the same time. <laughs> It'd be even better. Yeah, the speech goes away. Yeah, no, the speech immediately evaporates. Speech function stops. That I feel like that is the, half the technique of musical comedians, though. Is you sit there and strum a guitar and you talk to people and, you're, and they're like, oh, uh-huh, and they start nodding their heads. They sound way cooler because uh, there's music. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you stop and say it and deliver your punchline and they're like, oh. <laughs> I love musical comedians. Um, you know, guys like Bowser and Blue and, and Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie and stuff like that. But they are, I don't know. The Jurgen Worms. The Jurgen Worms, who are probably my favorite musical comedians ever really yeah uh, i'm a fan tom so. lehrer tom lehrer he does it on a piano which is yeah which is super boss tim minchin tim minchin yeah also, also does it on super piano. boss piano guy yeah tim minchin boss I mean, tim minchin started as a boss piano guy yeah so did tom lehrer tom sure. lehrer started out as a chemist 
That explains like, he has so a, much. He has a PhD in chemistry. Ed. Is he Ed, alive? I don't know. I don't think he's alive. We'll find out in the show notes. <laughs> Check the show notes for whether or not Tom Lehrer is alive. Do you know if uh, there's any musical comedians who play bass? I feel like that's I'm something sure that there must be. There, there would have to be like a niche market for it. Tito but... Jackson. Uh, doesn't... Don't... I know one of the Argon Worms definitely plays guitar, and I feel like another one might play bass? Yeah. I don't know which one. Probably. Or maybe all of them. I don't know. They're amazing. So... Mm. But it's always within the context of a group. No, there's no yeah, solo there's a trio. There's <laughs> solo basses. Well, what about that, so, that cello guy? That's sort of like a bass. Yeah. A little. I don't... I guess they're sort of alike. They play in the same register. Fair enough. <laughs> they have strings and stuff. <laughs> this is what Listen, you... I'm a wind player, okay? <laughs> this is what makes you the musical genius portion of this band. <laughs> the part where I don't understand the difference between a cello and a bass. Sure. <laughs> oh man, so much of the yeah, this 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 is our our mess around and play instruments podcast. But yeah, we were gonna work on a song. We wanted it to be about what do we want it to be about? How we get man spread? Man spread? Yeah. <laughs> we just I, I have to man get some room really here. Interlocking <laughs> knees. Interlocking yeah. knees is our Wootsie Rock <laughs> cover band. How do we get to have our own cover band and and be in our own cover band? Really, it's the only way we were ever going to get one. So here we go. <laughs> That's okay. Doug and I had that fictitious metal band called Obelisk. <laughs> Did you have umlauts over everything? Yeah. Ah. Hook, hook umlaut, Obelisk with uh, Y's over, or sorry, uh, umlauts over the Y. Nice. Spelled A U B O L Y S K. With Metallica. Wow, that's intense. Well, it's because there's already a band called Obelisk, spelled Obelisk, so we had mm. to change it up and add some umlauts. Sure. Yep. So, I know that the, um, oh, what's it called? The, the one diner, Mel's Diner, both the old location before it burnt down, the new location after they rebuilt, and then the other new location on Ottawa Street, whenever we'd go for breakfast, I would take the placemat and write Obelisk was here every single time we went. So at the very least, people at Mel's knew that we were a thing. We wanted to get t-shirts printed up with our tour dates of the tours we were never going to go on, because that's what we do in a fictitious metal band. I like it. Yeah. I might be in a fictitious metal band, I might not even know it. We're going to do a song about man spreading? I don't know if I thought we had to send in something else. Too late. It's gone too far. We had a serious idea. I proposed this cool serious, serious idea. Those always get thrown out with the funny ideas. Not always. I'm not gonna look at the door. On the far side. that a bit. It's got a little too much repetition, I think, guys. Um, I'll well, stop manspreading now. Sorry, I Kaylee. I can't stop manspreading. No, your, so. your instrument is designed for for the spreading. Uh, <laughs> ours are not. <laughs> Our guitar, in fact, benefits for you holding yourself close because mm-hmm. you've got to keep that part of the body on your knee. I still say. Do people <laughs> they, play the bass like that? Is yes. that a thing? Sometimes yes, when you sit down. Um, not standing. Okay. But uh, also gives Ryan an excuse to manspread. 
Mm. Yeah, like I said, we had a serious song idea, and I got ditched in favor of the wonderful harmonies of Man We just decided we wanted to make a song about how entitled we are to uh, take up the space of other people on uh, every form of public transportation imaginable. Although, to be fair, the song started off as a punk song. That's true. That's Man's true. bread! Man's bread! <laughs> Isn't that just the lyrics to Wayne's World? Maybe. What? Man's bread! Man's bread! Party time! What's the lid? Like, Maybe. Isn't that just Wayne's World? I'm not complaining. I'm... Wayne's World is basically hey, the start. Opinion. You start with something good, and then you just make it your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we did that. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, what is one thing that you would do to change up Man's Breath? Add a thing to it. Um, a more killer baseline. Yeah, I was, I was thinking something a little bit more, or at least uh, I'd change it up for the chorus. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, we we could stick to the three chords or three notes in my case. Um, but yeah, just varied up a little bit. Maybe follow your your strumming more so. Provide mm-hmm. support to your low end as opposed to me just doing my own thing. Yeah. So just make a more cohesive bass line. Still, not bad for a bass line that we invented literally tonight. Yep. Uh, Kaylee, what's your workshop note for this? Uh, awkward in-between person bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge from perspective of this person. Yeah. <laughs> Which would work really well for the music video. Right. <laughs> we film the entire thing jammed up. <laughs> it would work. It would be great, I'm sure. I don't know that Kaylee could actually play the cajon like that, but I mean... There we go. <laughs> yeah. For those of you listening, I recommend watching a YouTube video, because this is a highly visual song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little... I uh, I want more verses. I want more. I, I I want a list of places where you could manspread, and because it, it can't just be a list of things. It needs to be two lists of things. I want a list of reasons why manspreading is clearly necessary. Like, uh, what there's the comfort argument. There's the it hurts. There's the my junk is so massive I can't contain it in in, in that space. I feel like that uh, is probably not gonna work out as a lyric just realistically just my junk is so massive it can't be contained between my knees i don't i don't are you kidding you just nailed it (laughs) my junk is so massive my junk is so massive can't be contained within my knees my junk is writing a bridge let's don't write a bridge bridge has got to be the other thing I mean, unless you want to just repeat that over and over again as a bridge. That's, also My Junk is So Massive is a completely <laughs> different song. I, uh... This, this seems like a good, uh, a good seg to uh, mention the fact that even if you have the worst idea ever... Yes. <laughs> well, well so, so Kaylee and I have an unwritten rule um, in that all of our rules for songwriting are unwritten on account yeah. of we haven't written any of them down. Yeah. But there is this point at which you will have an idea... That embarrasses you. That you are ashamed that you even thought of. Yes. <laughs> like it will make you groan, or you'll just think it's stupid. Or, or like super, in a lot of our cases, super duper syrupy sweet. And yeah, just like saccharin. Um, yeah, that was the word I wanted. <laughs> and the rule is, no matter how dumb you think it is, you have to say it. If I, If you get caught with that look on your face. That is, I just thought of something awful. Mine is a, sort of a furrowed, a sort of faint frown. And Jim's is like... <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I sort of pause, and occasionally I will, like, moan it into my hands. Uh, yeah, it's true. I'm not sure if you'll catch it if you rewatch the video. I might have made that face because I thought of an idea for the song of somehow working in, like, astronauts, man-spreading in space. <laughs> nice! I love it. Because yeah. I think the other... Uh, some, you know one thing that the song could use is also a list of places where clearly... Like it is, is very inappropriate. I see man spreading to the stars. Like the opera. Yeah. <laughs> like those seats, there's no man, room. Man to... spreading on your bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Drew man spreads on his bicycle. He doesn't have a choice. It's it's like microscopic. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so that's all. That's exactly it. 
is is you have to say it sometimes because those lines turn out really well in the like like there have been at, I think at least three of those lines where we're just like we'll say it and we'll stop and we'll be like yes that is the line that goes here um I can think of one yeah. Yeah. I can't. I don't have any. I can think of mind. one from an as yet unreleased song. Okay. Which was. You don't have to worry about how it makes me feel. Oh yeah, that's true. That song, that particular line, I remember when we were putting that song together. Jim just stopped and went. My God! Like he just made the face, like in his brain, something had just clicked into position, and he's like, "No, no, it's too, it's too, too sappy. It's too much. It's too on the nose." And then he sang that line, and I was like, "No, that is, that is the best thing that could possibly go there." <laughs> yeah, and there, there's a lot, there's a lot of ones like that where, where it's the spur of the moment thing. But I think a lot, the, the, the point of that is more that. It is really easy to be embarrassed or self-conscious of a thing, especially when you have there are feels in it. Yeah, like, which which often there are. I find that we are writing less and less songs about video games and more and more songs about feels. Yeah, so it's really easy to in that one as an example to be like, I am saying a thing that is actually really sentimental and indicative of someone's feelings yeah. somewhere, and I don't want to say it. But now I have to because I thought of it, and I have that look on my face that says I thought of a thing. <laughs> yeah, and so it's part of it is 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 building. It's as much songwriting is as much a therapeutic exercise <laughs> as it is a creative process in in which it, it helps us become less self conscious about lyrics, and thus uh, we produce better lyrics, and which makes us produce better songs because lyrics is what makes our songs good. Arguably, musical arrangement is also what makes our songs good. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, Man Spread, coming to a Music Friday near you. I guess so. I guess we have to schedule the time to record the rest. <laughs> yep. We'll, we'll, get that. We'll, we'll make that happen. Um, I'm Jim. I'm Kaylee. And I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay musical. Let's play ourselves off. Okay. <laughs>